Well, I think the axle is foobard. Hey John here, we got this uh, 2005 caravan trailer made by caravan. It's a snowmobile trailer and uh, it does have a cap on it. The cap is uh, just over there, but I use this for uh, well snowmobiles and a four-wheeler or side-by-side -side without the cap. But uh, the reason for this video is uh, uh, tire wear, just excessive tire wear. It started wearing tires, but not at an alarming rate. You know, every couple of years you'd have to put new tires on it. And I'm down to literally one trip. It's a 10 hour trip, five up, five back, and it wore, I've got some wear on the tire. The tires that are on it are new. Those were, I believe, two years ago. I'll show you up close how bad they are. This is a better look at the tires. So this, uh, that was on the inside. So that is just horrible wear. And I, I think this is uh, two seasons. Um, and I might even had the tires flipped. I can't remember that, but you could see here. And if you're a tire guy or a trailer guy or anybody that knows what they're looking at here, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's uh, obviously can't can't use these tires. All right, so I got some of the scrap metal left over. We're going to use this for uh, to find out some uh, information here. So I just drilled a hole in this one, and we're going to attach this. Uh, and I marked it on the other one. Still going to drill that one, but and they're they're both uh, identical. Uh, you know, pieces cut. And we're just going to go ahead and, and uh, put this on a uh, bright bad lighting on a stud here. So originally we took, I took a measurement from the back of this nut to that center piece up there. I had it marked in a location you probably can't see on the camera there. Same thing here. It's the exact same screw, exact same, you know, it doesn't have threads here. So I went up there with a back or not. And uh, it's in the exact same position as the other one. We're a half inch off and I thought, okay half inch off maybe we can uh, do something with this if they're oblong maybe shove one side up you know you know tweak it this way that way uh, but doing this measurement here so that is flat against this uh, flange and this is a straight piece same as the other one uh, they're both straight angle pieces and I'm getting uh, <laughs> it's way off so I'm getting I think it was 72 and a half from the back piece here to that piece here and again these are identical pieces the whole everything is identical so 72 and a half across the back and once i saw 73 something up here i think it was 73 and a quarter 73 and uh you know we're, we're basically we're too far off all right so i got this axle in from the trailer depot uh, the trailer yeah, I think it's called the Trailer Depot. Looking online, I usually go through that uh, e-trailer. They didn't have this axle, or not even close to it, and they were starting to use these uh, independent things. No, no center axle, just the, uh, they were torsion, but uh, you, you just, it's kind of a, it looks like to me a new setup. But anyways, I uh, found this axle on the Trailer Depot, and it's not exactly for this trailer. This is a caravan trailer that belongs to, uh, for a Triton. But the measurements underneath on my, uh, you know, rails underneath, I could take some plywood off, but are pretty damn close. So I think this will work if I have to do some, a uh, little bit of fabrication, that's fine. All right, so I got the old axle off, and uh, I got some spare tires on a new axle. It's uh, perfect. Uh, it's actually better than perfect. So um, the, the old axle, they're just opposing each other, but it's lower. So I ended up, uh, over the years, I added this spacer out of aluminum, and, uh, you know, I just went on the frame itself, right? And I boosted it up, and it's almost the same level it is now with the new one. So, uh, well, clearly it's it's a thicker axle. It's a 2,200-pound axle as opposed to the 2,000-pound axle. But even the I beam is uh, thicker. I think that's uh, that might be two inches. This is like two and a half. Uh, the the actual knuckles, or you know whatever you want to call them, way thicker than the uh, the original guys. Uh, again, this is off. There's, you know, the application is for a Triton, but it lines up with the rails perfectly. Even the slots are bigger, so you got some, uh, you know, room to play with. Uh, so, so I'm happy with this that I don't have to put the spacers in there, and uh, hopefully get a better ride. All right. So, uh, besides the uh, the two, you know, reinforcements for the side by sides at well, the beginning of the season or last year, maybe I had to add uh, this. I had to box this in because there was where the bolt was, it was cracked. I'll take it underneath and show you. But I was only able to do the three sides, one, two, and the top. Um, and the bottom I couldn't do because the, uh, well, I could do it, but I didn't want to drop the axle. So now's the time to do it. Just clean it up a little bit. And uh, 
a weld so, uh, you know, to complete the whole box. Let me take it underneath, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this has a, a crack. It had a crack. See, originally the, the, this was steel on here. You see it's all pitted, um, but it was steel and it caused that Alka-Seltzer stuff. And, and as you can see, this is kind of a, it's dipped a little bit here because it ate away at it. So I cleaned it up a little bit, but that was cracked all the way on both sides. Um, I wasn't too worried about it, uh, but you know, when I did these uh, panels up here, the time was to uh, fix that. Rather than just weld the crack, I added these, uh, you know, I just boxed it in. Now I can box it in the bottom. I have to find two more holes, but the, 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 what I'm getting at there is because this axle has, uh, this is, uh, I think this was two and, uh, I don't know what hell my, oh, there it is. This was two and a half, I think. This is going to work out great. Yeah, that's two and a half. This piece. The uh, original frame here is only, uh, I think it was an inch and three quarters. And that was only two, two inches. So this is going to work out good adding, even if I didn't have this crack and fix this uh, last year or whatever, I would have probably added this anyways, just to take up because now it's two and a half with the, with the three sixteenths added on both sides. It's going to be perfect. All right, so I got the frame all boxed in and uh, ready for this axe. We're going to jack it up, but before I do, uh, this is galvanized. Uh, you know steel on aluminum and it doesn't talk well the original axle uh, when I took it out the first time they had uh, of course the, this was steel and it was galvanized too but the piece they had on top so this is all boxed in with aluminum but they had just a metal piece a metal um, I don't know it's about uh, it was actually pretty thick it was about a quarter inch thick and that, that's what they used for um, the top piece and that top piece just buckled I mean uh, you know uh, the Alka-Seltzer deal you know aluminum steel it, it literally jacked the thing it, it's not rust it's just corrosion but it jacked it so I couldn't get the bolts off and I cut the bolts the thing went BAM it had that much pressure on it from uh, jacking but anyways uh, I'm gonna throw a barrier uh, Gorilla Tape on this uh, to help with that steel on aluminum uh, or you could, I guess, if you had a little uh, rubber or, or anything to create a, a, you know, a barrier between there. But well, I didn't have enough, did not have enough tape to go around. I got the one side, so I'm just gonna. Uh, this is a bicycle tire tube. I'm just gonna slip this down here. I'm gonna use this as a, a rubber barrier between the, the uh, steel and the aluminum. Uh, so what I ended up doing is uh, I just le left that side down off the jack on the floor and got a, uh, one of these scissor deals under here and just get one side up. You know, I'm working alone here. If you, if you're, you know, have somebody to help you out, this axle is too, too heavy for me to lift and try to thread, you know, a bolt, keep it in place. Uh, so this is what I ended up doing. Put my rubber on first and then uh, got the two bolts, the two uh, nuts started on there. And now I can, you know, take that out of there. But got another scissor jack and uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, jack her up. All right, so we got the axle cinched up. I got that uh, the rubber I was talking about in between the axle and the uh, the aluminum, right? And I did a couple moves here. I want this as accurate as possible. I don't want to be off like even a cut here. So uh, let me show you up front. This is what I ended up doing. I tried using mason line at first, but it's too stretchy. Even though it's, it doesn't really stretch, it stretches enough. So I ended up doing uh, so this this uh, aluminum piece. I just got it clamped to the tongue, and that's uh, this vertical piece is just welded, you know, a scrap piece of uh, aluminum welded down, uh, a teat off of, you know, so it's square, so it's vertical right underneath the tongue. You get what I'm saying? And then I took a um, a tape measure and just some welding wire, or whatever, and because when we swing it from uh, post to post, you know, from from uh, from one wheel to the other, I needed to have it, you know, accurate. <laughs> so trying to hook that thing on like here and, w w you know, one person, it kept falling off and it's not going to be accurate because you might be here and then when you're under the trailer, you're trying to stretch it out, you might be up here, you know. Or, so doing it this way, it's got a little, uh, it, it pivots, but it's it's not going to be able to stretch. You get what I'm saying, right? All right, so we are dialed into exactly. Um, so... I don't know if you can see that laser mark up there, but it isn't really important that this this line 
I was just thinking about it because if your frame is a little bit uh, tweaked, bent or whatever, um, what is important is I wanted this in the center. Like, I don't know if I pointed it out, like shifting this over because of these slots, you could probably see that slot. You could see how it could shift one way or the other. And the slot is also bigger than this bolt. So not only can it shift one way or the other, it can also shift a little bit this way and that way. And that's where I was at. Um, before we tighten these down, I want to make sure exactly center line, and that's where we're at right now. Uh, so it's it's exactly in the center of of each frame, you know, underneath. And now, uh, it only took uh, I was just tapping that side. I think I tapped it forward with just rubber hammer, and it and it went it right into where exactly uh, one. It's 121 and 5 eighths to that tick mark. And again, you swing it over this way. 121 and 5 eighths to that tick mark. Exactly the same. So I'm happy with that. So I think I'm going to uh, tighten it up. Tighten it up uh, right where it is. And I'm still going to keep measuring when I tighten because I don't want uh, things to twist. And then from there, what I'm going to do is take a piece of angle iron, uh, aluminum angle iron, and I'm going to weld it right, you know, to this to this piece here. This is steel, but weld it right to here so this thing cannot move. In other words, it'll be just a, you know, an angle iron coming down so this can't move. I'll do it on uh, front and back, and that way uh, it has like a slot to live in because, you know, these are just bolts. What if they get jacked with, well, they're galvanized, but, you know, I don't want it to twist whatsoever. Once I get this tightened down, that's what I'm going to do. It's just add a piece of angle iron so it'll be locked in, can't go nowhere. These little, uh, I'm just going to put some angle iron like this, weld it on like that. However, this, however, I measure that, I think something like this. Yeah, weld this on like that to, to have a stop. So, on, on both sides, front and back. All right. All right, so I added them uh, little stops there from, you know, this axle preventing it to in the future if it gets, uh, you know, tweaked or whatever. It can't go forward, it can't go backwards, and it can't twist. So I'm happy with that. So, anyways, uh, I, I think I'm gonna end the video here. As far as, you know, the, we, we put the axle on. Uh, originally, the tires were wearing out with uh, this this old damn axle over here, and. I think we got a lick now because everything's straight as an arrow and the toe is uh, exactly on point. Everything is exactly measured across. And also the camber, there's no, or is it cast or a camber? There's, this, this axle is straight as an arrow. So these wheels will sit straight up and down, which I like. I mean, uh, it's a heavier duty uh, axle too. So so there's that. So there's no, and plus this, this trailer can only hold, uh, it's less than 2,000 pounds, I think is a, the carrying weight is 1600 pounds or something like that so it's not like this axle is going to flex or anything anyways that's all i got thanks for watching if you have this uh, problem where you're wearing out tires uh, this axle costs like 500 bucks from the trailer depot and uh, we got it hooked up and ready to go right all right thanks for watching later